Hey everybody, my name is Scott Steen. I'm the lead handicapper and director of communications over at winnersandwiners.com. Winnersandwiners.com is the number one site in America for predictive sports analysis on each and every game going on in America every single day. If you haven't checked it out yet, it is a fantastic resource. They have full write-ups for uh, every game in the NFL. Uh, it was about 60 or 80 of the top college games each week. Of course, we've got hockey and basketball on the way, and they'll be doing write-ups for each of those games. So make sure you check out winnersandwiners.com and our sister site, statsalt.com, for deep dives into every single game every single day. All right, well, we are here today to take a look at what promises to be Another raucous Thursday night battle. Man, we have had some dogs on a Thursday night with the uh, Packers and Bears. And then that uh, horrible game with uh, Tampa Bay and Carolina last week. So, hopefully, we uh, maybe get off the schneid a little bit and have a little good football. But I have to tell you, this game <laughs> certainly has the potential to be uh, one of those games just like we've seen so far. But, fingers crossed, alright? So... Uh, we've got the Titans going against the Jaguars. Titans are a one-and-a-half point road favorite. Uh, the total in this one has uh, fallen down to a positive 1980s, like 39-and-a-half. Um, these teams, both of these teams, feel like they let one get away last week. The Titans, uh, in particular, played the Colts very tough, had a lead late. They gave up a long run to uh, Wilkins, who was able to bust free into the second level. Linebacker missed their assignment, didn't stay home. And he was off to the races, and that gave uh, the Colts a lead that they would uh, ultimately be able to hold on to as the Titans' last second drive fell just a little bit short. Although, a, uh, on a scramble by Mariota, there certainly was a, a head-to-head, a, they don't call it targeting in the NFL, but a leading with the helmet kind of contact that could have been called given in another 15 yards, which may have made quite a bit of difference. But... Uh, ifs and buts, candies and nuts, you know how that goes. And on the other hand, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, after getting pretty pretty well outclassed opening week in uh, against Kansas City, went to Houston and put up a heck of a fight, a game that uh, head coach Doug Marone decided to gamble late after scoring a, a touchdown. And instead of going for the game-tying extra point and taking their chances in overtime, uh, they went for the win, handed the ball to Leonard Fournette, and he came up just a little bit short as the uh, Jags lose 13-12 to to a uh, pretty darn fine Houston Texans team. So, what's going to happen when these guys get together and dance uh, in this one? Well, for one thing, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be another defensive struggle in this one. Uh, these both both of these two teams uh, have defenses that far outclass their offenses at this point. Of course, uh, Jacksonville, you know the story by now. Uh, big uh, high splash, uh, high, high free agent signing. Nick Foles went down in the first week against KC. Replaced by Washington State, very very prolific passer up there in Mike Leach's system. Uh, Gardner Minshew has who has been uh, pretty good. He he uh, he maybe was a little bit of fool's gold after Week One because he came in after Kansas City already had a big lead. They played a very very soft defense. He completed a lot of passes in front of uh, the kind of the picket fences that Kansas City had set up. So he put up some pretty some pretty strong stats there in Week One. He brought back to earth just a little bit there last week against the Texans, as the Texans uh, have certainly done to uh, better quarterbacks than the Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Uh, the Titans here, they've uh, had a pretty fine season as far as being able to move the football, but the one exception of third down, they have been absolutely dreadful on third down, picking up just three of 20. They And, this, and these two things could be related. They haven't done much of a job of getting Derrick Henry involved in the passing offense. He has caught just three passes so far on the season. And I think they have to get him a little more involved, especially on third down. Uh, both of these teams, make no mistake, would rather run the ball than pass. Uh, they both have very fine running backs in Derrick Henry and Leonard Fournette. Although Fournette so far, uh, although he is allegedly healthy, he has not looked great this season. He's averaged just four yards per carry. And we're going to find out what uh, when push comes to shove there, because this is a Tennessee defense that does a lot of things right. But they have been a little bit vulnerable to the run. Uh, given up five yards per carry. The, uh, what I think happens in this one is the Tennessee defense starts licking their chops at the prospect of going against Gardner Minshew. And like I said, Mark, Minshew was uh, brought back to earth a little bit last week, and so was the Jacksonville offensive line. They've had, certainly had their struggles, and they struggled last week keeping Minshew upright as he was sacked four times. And most importantly, on four of those sacks, 
he was stripped of the football. Now, they did re- manage to recover two of them, so they just had one lost fumble. But make no mistake, for a Tennessee defense that is already plus five in turnover ratio just two games into the season and has recorded eight sacks, this team is ready to go. Uh, Mariota, I think in the end, I think uh, he does just enough to to keep them out of trouble. Derrick Henry, I think he runs the ball successfully against a uh, against a Jacksonville defense that, again, was good the first week against Kansas City, although Kansas City did not really attempt to run the ball all that much. Last week, they gave up an average of 4.65 yards to the duo of uh, down there in Texas of... Um, Oh, you know the uh, um, Carlos Hyde and and the uh, the cat from uh, Cleveland, Duke Johnson. Sorry, brain fart there, guys. Uh, two guys that uh, certainly you wouldn't be starting as your uh, RB one in any fantasy league, and yet they gash that Jacksonville defense for a lot of yards. I think Derrick Henry is able to do the same thing against this defense. Uh, I think the Tennessee defense is opportunistic again. I think they get at least one turnover in plus territory. And the wild card in all this is kind of the disarray that's going on down there in Jacksonville um, with uh, Jalen Ramsey and all that, but he's going to be traded or not traded. There's some rumblings about guys already just, uh, you know, they're not quite giving it up like Miami, but they're, uh, they're certainly not excited about the season, especially after losing Nick Foles. I think Tennessee writes the ship here again. I think they get revenge for uh, last week and take it out on a, a Jacksonville team that uh, at the end of the day, is really going nowhere. Give me Tennessee laying the one and a half, all right? So, get yourself down on those visiting Tennessee Titans. Go ahead and lay the one and a half, and at the end of that game, you guys can join me as we stop by and pick up our winning tickets and head back to the window. All right, good luck, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care.